This is Omrin. A five-year-old boy from a battle-scarred city in North Syria. He sat in an ambulance, face covered in blood and dirt. His photos and videos went viral in August, 2016. This heartbreaking photo was used in reports by many Western media. People all over the world sympathized with this poor little boy while condemning the Syrian government. With this human rights issue as their cause, the U.S. government launched their attack on Syria. He doesn't cry once. That little boy is in total shock. He's stunned inside his home one moment and the next, lost in the, fl in the flurry and the fury of war and chaos. At least three people were killed by this bomb in this neighborhood. This is Omran. He's alive. However, not long after, Omran's father said during an interview that after the explosion, Omran was taken away from him by several people to take that photo. These people that Omran's father spoke of are from the White Helmets, officially known as Syria Civil Defense. They have been smearing the Syrian government with fake videos. As reported by many media, the United States is one of their major supporters. <laughs> بعدين بوسائل اعلام وقت اللي ما حكيت انا معه رجعوا كذا كل ما يصير شيء يقولوا استشهد عمران واخته creating these touching moments manipulating public opinion with paid actors rationalize things by sparking conflicts are all old tricks of western countries chief among them the united states just recently the white helmets stuck out their noses once again since the conflict between russia and ukraine Western countries, including the United States, have been condemning Russia and providing weapons and equipment to Ukraine. According to the Times, the White Helmets have been helping Ukrainians with making training videos, teaching them how to rescue people and how to record crimes of war. Other than these efforts, many other endeavors have been made by the U.S. government to provide the right cause for their hegemonic behaviors, making them seem reasonable. In 1980s, Japan was briefly the world's largest semiconductor producer, surpassing the United States. Then the CIA proposed that a recess in America's semiconductor industry might bring major risks to their national security. That's the way they're wired. The United States was not the leader in the semiconductor industry, therefore the US military would be forced to procure products from Japan or other countries which were highly unreliable. Besides, in the event of a war, Japan might also stop providing products to the United States or worse, providing these products to their opponent, the Soviet Union. So, leaving Japan as the leader in the semiconductor industry will compromise the United States national security. With their possible theories and seemingly reasonable causes, the United States launched a brutal sanction against the Japanese semiconductor industry. In 1972, the United States accused Casio of violation of anti-dumping law, refusing to supply key materials to Japan. This was a major blow to Japanese corporations. Japan was then forced to sign an agreement with the United States, making all U.S.'s hegemonic behaviors lawful. In 1986, Japan signed an agreement regarding the semiconductor industry with the United States, which required that Japan open its semiconductor market. Then the United States imposed a 100% tariff on $300 million worth of chips imported from Japan as a punishment. After that, Japan was again forced to sign the Plaza Accord, resulting in a huge appreciation of JPY against USD rapidly expanding Japan's economic bubble. Eventually, in 1992, American semiconductor companies had reclaimed their share of global market. The United States dethroned Japan as the largest chip exporter in the world, once again. Attempting to rationalize their hegemonic behaviors, the United States has been known to put domestic laws and regulations above the international law. The latest case we've seen was the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which will come into effect six months after signing. This act puts a restriction on commodities imported by American corporations that were made in Xinjiang, cracking down Xinjiang economically with forced labor as their excuse. The United States has always been trying to make their behavior reasonable, rational, and lawful. Yet their attempts are built on false information, rumors, made-up excuses, and accusations. In our global history, the United States has a long heritage of creating and spreading false allegations. In 1990, the U.S. government created the incubator hoax, stoking American people's anger against Iraq. I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators. In 2003, with a tube of washing powder as proof of possession of weapons of mass destruction, the United States waged the Iraq war, killing over 200,000 civilians. Less than a teaspoonful of 
dry anthrax in an envelope shut down the United States Senate in the fall of 2001. During the pandemic, the U.S. government cooked various rumors regarding COVID as a smokescreen for their people. I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. Lies can never trump truth, and the United States will be seen in its true form by more and more people in the world. Do you know who the greatest propagator of disinformation in the history of the world is? The U.S. government.